Okay, um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, presentation with Injiricon. Uh, hope you've had a good day. Hope you can make the distance for the next 45 minutes or so. Um, okay, we're going to talk about workflow and process optimization in Jira. Uh, I'm Ian Bradley, Metrica CTO and founder, and I'll just tell you a tiny bit about me. And I'm hoping you can hear me and see me, and that if not, just raise your hand and and then I'll just double check here that everything's all right. Okay, cool. All right, I'm based in Maroubra Beach, Sydney. Um, long time in business intelligence, data science, full stack programming. I'm a data nerd fundamentally. This presentation will be a lot about data. I have a lot of experience with service management and process data. So we're going to really drive this from the data perspective, this whole concept of process and workflow optimization. Um, started Metricus quite a while back, um, all around data analytics, high end machine learning stuff, transformed it into process mining. Process mining is really the key to process optimization. And I play a lot of golf. I've almost played the top 100 in the world. Getting more difficult, I will get there. Agenda. We'll try to go for about 40 minutes. Um, we will start with some boring stuff. So please be patient, maybe a few minutes, but we've got, got to get some terminology right here around processes, workflows and issues. Different enterprise systems, JIRA, ServiceNow, et cetera, have nuances of the definitions. So let's just get on the same space and what they're about. That won't take long. Then we get in, all right, what are some of the problems in processes? Problems create opportunities and the opportunities enable us to then optimize. And part of doing that is understanding what process analytics are in the context of available applications in JIRA and um, and, and the one that I'm going to show you, which is the process optimizer. Um, I'll introduce the process mining, which is really cool technology, uh, probably the fastest growing type of technology in the whole data science field. And then we might just stop to see what questions we got then, because that'll be the end of the presentation. And then we'll get into the actual doing, using the app to do some discovery findings, initiatives, I'll take you through all of that. It's it's a sophisticated application, there's a lot to it. We'll do some basics, have a bit of a Q&A, see how time's going and we might do some of the more advanced stuff, you know, cost simulation and, and what have you. So just to get going, processes. A collection of related structured activities or tasks performed by people or equipment in which a specific sequence serves a particular business goal for a particular customer. Just standard wiki. So something in which we are trying to achieve something. Processes are the core of all business. A bank has processes. The lending, a hospital has processes for patient management. In JIRA, there are processes for service management. Um, uh, companies have processes and accounts receivable, procure to pay, etc. Uh, efficient companies have efficient processes. They are the backbone of good business. Now, within a process, and I, I say that because we underestimate the importance of efficient processes. So in a process, you have um, activities, and activities like an event that occurs in a process. And if we look at JIRA, um, an activity might be a, a status change, or it could be an assignment group change, or it might be a priority changing, or a um, providing feedback to a customer. So they're things that happen, that events that happen during the life cycle of a process. Then we have a step, and a step is going from one activity to the next, like a status change from on hold to, to um, in progress or from one assignment group to another. Then we have variance. 
So a variant is a combination, a unique combination of steps in a process. Now, you might have a workflow where, and we'll get to workflows that looks like there should only be a handful of variants. I have seen incident management processes with over 2,000 types of variants. So they're combinations of steps. All right, so that's just some terminology. Now, I told you it'd be boring, that's okay. Now within JIRA, we have projects and processes. So JIRA service management, we have IT service management with your standard ITOL processes, incident management, service request management, change management. They are not workflows, they are not issue types, they are processes, defined processes, customer service management, request for fulfillment, etc. So JIRA has the product, the project, the project has processes. Work management, similar. Project management, task management. Task, task is quite generic process. Sales pipeline, customer opportunity, etc. Then we get into Jira software. Again, product that has projects, and the projects have processes. The processes that you're trying to trying to achieve business goals. Right. Now let's link that to workflows and issues. So a workflow is the definition of a process and the activity and steps involved in the execution of the process. So workflow is trying to help us execute the process correctly. And in JIRA, workflows are typically focused on state changes. We know that. And if we just dash across to JIRA, uh, let me go here. We've got, okay, service management type of project. Then we have issues which are related to types of process, and then we have the defined workflows, okay. And a workflow is sort of like this is how it kind of should work, okay. Um, so, and in JIRA, a single execution of a process is an issue. If we look at a service now, a single execution of a process is a task, right? They're basic, they're the same thing, right? I just wanted to highlight that. And a, a, an issue should adhere to the defined workflows for the associated process. But um, understand here, and it's important that the workflow only really relates to status and it's only got guiding the process and that you need to know that from an optimization perspective. Now, an issue is associated in JIRA with a project issue type and different issue types will, of course, have different workflows. That is just some, the boring stuff, the sort of like the definition, looking at processes, workflows guide processes, and then issues are instances of a process. Now, what we have is, um, the reality. We have a design workflow, which is how we want it to work. The actual workflow will often be miles different, okay? We need to be able to see that and fix it. But this process reality, that causes problems. For example, incorrect issue creation. Issues go immediate from new to on hold. Assignment problems, multiple assignments the same assignment group, vendor performance, all right, won't go through the whole list, but that reality of a process not being defined causes a lot of different problems. And if we have problems, we have an opportunity. And this is really getting into what process optimi optimization is all about. It's taking advantage of the opportunity created by the problems that you're identifying. Three main types, performance, what's taking too long, where are their loops, where are their potential cost savings by reducing the time it takes to do something. Then performance is like your go-to. That's the first one if you're going to do an optimization. The second one might be automation, like trying to detect what things can be automatically, um, so, sorry, what steps can be 
automatically automated, trying to measure the percentage of automation in the process. Then the third sort of area in process optimization from the business opportunities is compliance, trying to maximize the compliance against your defined workflows and standards in processes such as being compliant with ITIL processes in the service management space. So the opportunity is related to performance, automation and compliance, reducing costs and improving service delivery. Now, I'm just watching my time, we're doing okay. So to work on those opportunities, you need data. You start, you need to, that's where we get into process analytics, right? We need data to, to, to tell us how to sort out those opportunities based on the problems. Now, traditional BI analytics are more about the what, okay? And in JIRA, the what being, tell me, issue volume over time, or did I meet SLA based upon particular categories? How long is us taking? And we have um, uh, apps in, um, I'm just going to double check that everything's all right here. Cool. Now. We have apps that can give us some basic process analytics. There's a lot of time in status apps, good ones in Jira. And they're kind of just telling us, right, for particular issues, how long they're spending in different states. They're very focused on purely a workflow and giving you a high level overview of how long things are, things are staying in different states. That can give you some nice information. And we've got Easy BI. Easy BI is terrific. It's more a, but it's more a traditional sort of reporting BI tool, which many of you will have used. It's not targeted at telling you the in, the real guts of a process. That's where we get into process mining. That's what it's all about. It's it's not necessarily the what. It's it's why. Like what steps cause are actually causing performance issues, which variants are taking the longest time. How much can we save by automating steps? What steps have a high standard deviation? You know, they're unstable. Where is the rework? So to uh, execute process optimization to improve our processes, we're going to drive it via process mining. Okay, so. What is process mining? It's a data science. It's a specific technology. It, it started in um, Northern Europe, focused on financial processes about 10, 12 years ago. And it's now morphed into the fastest growing area within data science. And what we're really doing is we're looking at what's happening in the event logs in JIRA, the activity, the work logs. We're grabbing all that data and then providing like an X-ray visualization. So we're visualizing the life cycle of the process, okay? That enables us to discover. We can easily see things, uh, visualize. We can look, we can analyze performance because we can see it. Then we can also see automation opportunities which steps could potentially be analyzed. You can easily see compliance problems and flag them and then we can do some cool stuff like um, um, let's start putting some costs in and then say, well, if we change this process by reducing the time for a particular step, for a particular type of issue, how much are we going to save? Right. And then so you discover and that discovery leads to findings. And then those findings we can create initiatives based off them, right? And those initiatives will drive your continual improvement cycle, okay? So it's not a one-off. You can use an optimization application to continually check your processes and then track the, 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 the improvement over time of the particular metrics that you want to measure. 
and then drive your continuous improvement programs based around this this sort of um, stuff, optimization, process mining. Now we're doing okay, 9.15, my time. Don't know what time it is yours. A couple of things before we get into the demo. Um, ServiceNow, big competitor of JIRA, some quotes from, from those guys. It's a game changer. Um, answering the questions of why KPIs can't do that. And it's a relatively easy decision for any company that wants to get better at digital transformation. Um, ServiceNow actually drive their enterprise licensing based upon process mining. So they will try to sell their enterprise versus professional based upon the, the process mining capabilities that they have along with the workforce optimization. And now JIRA has something that's just as good, if not better. Um, so this is not like, uh, this is a proven um, way of do, process mining is a proven way of doing process optimization. On that note, Salonis did, um, Salonis is the largest enterprise process mining player. Um, and a couple of years ago, they did um, a process mining project for Koch Industries. This was a service now. Uh, large volumes, over 300,000 inc incidents per year. They gathered all the data and they saved over a million bucks through a process optimization project. Uh, and in areas that they didn't initially think about, you've got your standard, right, let's reduce loops, let's fix our reassignments, figure out what's taking too long. That in turn led to a reduction in problems. So that was an implicit cost saving that wasn't sorry, a secondary cost saving that wasn't explicitly targeted. Fewer incidents were becoming problems, so they saved on problem management. They also saved on reporting because their data was cleaner, um, et cetera. So um, the larger businesses throughout the world that are serious about service management, enterprise service management are using this sort of stuff, the process mining and process optimization. Now, if you like, this all this uh, technology is a bit new to me. Are there any questions? It does not look like it. Okay, we'll move on. Um, so what we've done in, in, in Metricus is build a application based on process mining technology that will drive process optimization for Jira customers. Uh, it's a sophisticated app. I'll, I'll walk through it, um, the basics, and then we'll see how we go. And uh, and based on the time and any questions, um, but it'll reinforce what I've just been talking about and you'll understand that now why some of the terminology that I mentioned is important. So we'll go across to, let's just open the app here. It's up. I just want to refresh it, refresh it. Cool. Now, there's this concept of a process model, and that is, right, you, you're going to want to analyze a process, and you're going to want to analyze one or more activities in that process, all right? And those activities may or may not relate to a workflow. Like, Status is related to a workflow, but you might want to analyze, all right, how, how, how are my incidents of service requests? What's the assignment patterns? Or for a change, you might want to monitor the approval cycles and the status changes, all right, because they're both part of that process. But to get started, we've got a wizard, and we can say, all right, what issue field do you want to analyze the process lifecycle for? And status is a really good one to start with. That's going to tell you a lot. Then we can say, what projects do you want to do it for? One or many, everything. 
Um, then what issue types? So here I might say I want to look at incidents and service requests. Okay. I might want to analyze how well my a, a software, an agile project is going. So I might have issue types which are epics or stories. So this is not just service management. It can be work, any project in work management or any project can do As long as we've got an activity and an issue type, you can analyze and optimize the process lifecycle for it. Attributes is important. When you're analyzing the process, it has issues. You want to know about those issues. So you might say, well, I might want to break them down by priority or by service or whatever standard task issue attributes you have or custom attributes that you have, service group, um, assign, who they're assigned to, stuff like that. Um, then we can just choose a day range, what ones are we interested. Then it's going to say, well, you've got to validate it. Let's make sure we got something here. Because you may choose a project for which the issue types don't exist. And at this stage, you can save the model. on demo. And open that up in the process optimizer. Now that's going to take a thousand issues, might take a minute or so. So let's open one that we've already done. Okay, so there's the one that we just did, Jurocon demo, a thousand. Let's open up this incident status one. The process optimizer. Right. So, what are we looking at? This top down graph is your visualization. That's starting to tell you, right, what's actually happening in our process. But to understand that, let's go over on the right here. Here we have this concept of variance, a variant being a unique set of steps associated with a process. Now, variant ID 1, there's 369 issues, 17.4% of our tasks. Those issues average 11 days with a standard deviation of 12 days. That's quite high. So Sometimes these don't take very long. Sometimes they take a long time. What are they? The unassigned to assigned to resolved to closed. Okay, that's a workflow that you would say is compliant. Okay, let's look at the second most common issue. Now, this is real data, by the way. Here we got unassigned to assigned to unassigned to assigned. You've got the loop. This is a loop. This should not be happening. Why is it going from unassigned to assigned then back to unassigned to assigned? So that's a that's a, a loop. That's representative of rework, which is going to mean that that the issues that have that are associated with this variant are going to be taking too long. The third most common is Oh, and you can make it so as if you click here, it just isolates. Let's do that. So these are issues that go unassigned straight to resolved. That's not compliant. That should not happen, but it is happening. So we don't want that. Right? Now, then we go the fifth most common. We're going from Assigned, unassigned, back to assign, then to resolve, then to close. That's okay, but it's not efficient. So we're, this is discovery. We are able to discover how are our issues getting resolved. We are able to look at the life cycle of them. Okay. Now you can you can just choose to look at say the top five or the top twenty. So over on the right will control what's in the visualizer. If you look at too many, it gets a bit messy. Now, up the top, you see this gauge, it's saying, well, we're looking at eight. There, there's two and a half thousand issues 
but there's five, over 500 different variants. This is real data. So this particular customer has, they're all over the shop in terms of how they resolve things. So in the process, in the discovery process, we can start looking at, okay, which variants are compliant, which ones are not. We can look at the metrics to say, well, okay, average duration of variant number six is 19 days. So those types of issues are taking longer. Right? Um, in our visualizer, we, the, the different steps are highlighted by the red. Currently, we're highlighting the steps by duration. So here it's saying that waiting the user to resolve is in red. So that's the one that's taking the longest time, which you would expect. That's taking an average of eight days, that step. And then the steps in green are the ones that, so assigned to unassigned, that's averaging only eight hours. Okay. Um, so we have different ways of visualizing what's happening to enable us to discover. We are in a discovery phase right now. We can highlight by volume to see which steps are the highest volume, and then by standard deviation, which ones are most inconsistent. Then um, in slices, here are our steps. So we might just say, well, I only want to look at, oh, well, the grid in and of itself is a report telling you which steps have the most events. There's all sorts of metrics that you can pull in. Okay. Once we start putting costs and compliance and all that in, so which steps are the most compliant, are we compliant which ones can be automated, we'll get to that in a little while. But not only is this a report, but you can use it to slice your data. You can say, well, I only want to look at um, variants that have this step. Okay. So as an analyst or a consultant, you can say, well, I know that step's a problem. Let me just show me the variants and the issues that have that step. Um, let's reset our slices. And in the slices, you can go activities. So the step is from one activity to the next. Activities are events that happen during the life cycle. And here are all our status changes. So you can say, well, I only want to look at ones that have the waiting for user activity or one or many. So a report on the different activities coupled with the ability to slice what you're looking at. And then we can get more complicated I said it was a fairly sophisticated app, it is. We can start looking at variants that have particular paths, like one that goes from unassigned that is eventually followed by another activity or not directly followed. Okay, so where we've got real complex processes here, we can start to drill down on stuff that we know should be happening and stuff that we don't we know shouldn't be happening. All right, so that's just a little bit about discovery in terms of variants and steps and activities and slicing. We can also filter. So I only want to look at issues of a particular priority, high, normal, critical, or of a particular category. Um, so we can filter what variants we're actually looking at, okay, based upon the attributes that we selected. One often do that. We here we brought in. Did it meet the, the resolve SLA or not? So what's sometimes cool? You can say, all right, show me the ones that met SLA and what their life cycles were versus the ones that didn't meet SLA. So you can quickly tell, okay, why is somebody something not meeting SLA versus something that is? Um, we have lots of demos and tutorials on all of that. I won't go too much into the detail because of time. Um, here. Now, um, so discovery, the next step is, all right, we've got this step here, schedule work to resolve, which is taking the longest. For any component, be it a step, an activity, a variant, we can then start drilling down. So now, second phase of discovery. 
what issues are these? Okay, and we can go as far as opening them up in, 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 in JIRA, right? So which ones are taking the most? So we've got a, a report here of these issues are associated with this step. And then we can break it down. Well, what types are they? Right. So just a simple way of breaking down and looking at reports on this step. We know it's a problem. What sorts of issues are they? We can then at the issue also look at um, the history to say, well, are they only just happening or are they happen is it increasing? So if this is a non-compliant step, is it still with us or is it, is it getting worse? And then we can look at all the different metrics across time to track performance, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the issues, we've also got some stuff like histograms. The performance might be not so good, but it might just be because you've got outliers, which is exactly what's happening in this case. Right? So it's enabling you to drill down on, right, it doesn't look good, but tell me a bit more about why. And in this case, oh, we've just got some. Now, then you can go into, all right, who is responsible for those? So what resources? So here's a person, uh, we, we, you can anonymize um, the, the resource assignee names, etc. So we can look at those people that are taking you know, excessive amounts of time and they might, have, they might be knowledge management issues and what have you. So you've got ways of drilling down on the issues associated with the step to just give you some basic reporting. Um, life cycle is another one. So for these issues, this is sort of like your time in status reporting within this application. What are their life cycles? So that's like we've got discovery from the visualizer and the variance and the slices, and then we've got the drilling down to the basics of the issues, details and history, histograms, etc. Then we got stuff that's right. Tell us even more. And, and, and the app will tell you what types of issues are actually the problem. So let's just look at root, root cause here. Um, so we can say, tell me by the service and the category where there's at least five issues what types that these so it's saying up for this step 35 percent of the issues are the uh, uh, ITS support the category add install move modify so where a step is potentially non-compliant or there's a performance issue you can then drill down and it's going to tell you what types of issues are associated with that we have different, I'm just conscious of my time here, we have different types of drill down, we have decomposition trees. Okay, and we also have influence analysis. So where we look at there. Let's say, well, where the service is AV support for events, the duration is 15% above average. So those types of issues are the ones that are causing you the most problems in this step. Okay. So there's an awful lot to this. I'm just conscious of time. Um, now, so discovery, look in some detail, then we can get some insights. We need to translate what we're discovering into findings. Now, again, you can do that, but you can say, uh, okay, finding might be we've got this uh, non compliance, which one was it? This guy, unassigned to resolve. We know that's non compliant. Now, there's three types of findings going back to the opportunities performance, automation, and compliance. 
So findings, we might say, well, this is a compliance finding to say that this step, and we're going to say this step for the variance that we've chosen, for the task, whether they're filtered or not, is non-compliant. Okay. Then we can have, uh, let's just bring them back up. We might say that a particular step is another finding is performance. We might say, well, where it is taking greater than X days or whatever, it's an issue. So tell me for this step which issues are, may or may not be related to a particular duration. And so we're creating findings. Now, I'm not saving it here because what's cool is we can discover and create findings, steps, we can go from here or in the, um, for all variants or particular set. So we can manually do it, but we have sets of predefined findings. Okay, so let me just load, download, where are we, incident? Yeah. All right. So this is this is really important in process optimization. For particular processes, we will often know best practice what should and should not happen. So we have sets of findings that you can put into the optimizer for different processes. Okay. And so here, unassigned, let's look at some of them from compliance. Unassigned to resolve is a non-compliant step. So it said you got 277 issues here, right? And we can then say, well, what are they? The detail. Tell me more about them, root cause. Okay. So findings can be manual or automated, and then it's going to tell you more about, okay, what types of issues were they? Uh, let's go down to findings here. So we've got some compliance ones here. Uh, we've got an automation one here. We'll auto automate incidents going from resolve to close. Okay. Typically in service management, resolve to close should be automated. It should not be a manual process. So that's a pretty simple sort of finding. And then we've got some performance ones where we've identified well, slow resolution for high priority incidents assigned to resolve is greater than six hours. Um, incidents that take more than seven days to move and resolve to close. That's a performance issue. There's 582 of them. What types were they? And of course, then you can create your initiatives, which is saying, I want to create this initiative. You can link it to a JIRA project and track the improvement across time. So there is your full cycle of process optimization, discovery, create findings and create initiatives, continuous improvement, track the improvement across time. Right. Um, we've only got, I only want to go for five minutes or so. Let me just make sure things are all right here. Um, now, um, Oh, we've got gauges up the top saying, based upon our findings, we've got that 92% of variants are compliant, 10% of events are automated. Uh, we've got all sorts of analytics to track that across time, percentage of clients across time, based upon particular attributes, so which ones are more, less what are compliant versus not. All right, so under analytics, I'm just going to finish off with one that is cost. So performance, when we create a performance finding, we, well, here we've got, okay, we've identified that assigned to resolve is excessive where the assignment group is ITS help desk. So we've drilled down root cause that said, hey, these are the ones that are taking the most time. 
And then we decided, right, we the initiative is to reduce the assigned to resolve time by 50% for these incidents. So there we set it up. We say duration reduction percentage, we want to do 50%. And we want to calculate the cost impact. Now, what we can also do is uh, let's just go assign to resolve. Oh, let me get my filter off. Uh, here we go. Costs. Um, let me just reset this. Oh, filter. Reset filters. Okay, we can go assign to resolve cost. Now, there's a lot to this. We can get cross costs in from Tempo. We can in import them from resource costs that are outside of JIRA. We can import them from JIRA attributes. We can have them on business hours, non-business hours. But let's just do a real simple one saying that we know that this step costs 50 bucks. And it's going to say, well, based upon the fact that we know the cost, we're going to reduce the time by 50%, we're going to get 54% cost saving. So you can now start simulating cost savings based upon performance improvements, based upon your findings, and determine, right, how much you're going to save if you implement this performance optimization initiative. It is 9.41. I shall see if there's any questions. Okay, we have some Q&A. And I know I breezed past that last bit pretty quickly, but you can always get in touch again. <laughs> um, so we've got a question. Can this data be presented as a report PDF dashboard? Everything can be exported, okay? Um, currently, it's to CSV or to Excel, any of the analytics, and the analytics can go to PDF. Okay, so any visual component of the optimizer can be exported to PDF. Any data grid can be exported to CSV or Excel for incorporation into um, I've had instances where uh, people just put in the Power BI as part of the dashboard, right? Um, now we have another question, which is, can you drill down to see what issues are in the loop? Probably a misusage can be identified. I'm not sure when that was um, um, asked, but let's just go back. So... Okay, I just want to reopen this. Um, all right, so we can, let's just filter on the variants that have loops. Okay. And so I'll just pick one there. So here's a loop. And as with any step, you can then go down and say, tell me which ones they are. All right. Based upon, say, category or service. All right. So now we know, okay, 29% of this type, 26% of this type. Or for a loop, you can look at, okay, again, what issues are they? Who was responsible? Okay. Um, so I think we sort of covered that one. Now, they were a couple of questions, no problems. Um, just in finishing off, because you probably want to break before you can, it's almost. Seven o'clock, I think, for you guys on the East Coast, and break before the final. We were looking at status, which is 
really the workflow interpretation of a process and is very important, okay, in process optimization. We can also, we've got a model here where we're looking at the assignment group. So this is going to tell us uh, oh. oh, let me just open up another browser there. We've got a filter from the background I didn't want. That's better. Okay. So for the incident process, we are now looking at the activity, which is the assignment group changing. So we can now look at, all right, how are things, finally go to ITS help desk, that makes sense. Well, here's a whole bundle, we're going to CTS, DSP team one, I don't know what that is, but it doesn't matter. And then we've got, okay, the transition from that team to team two is averaging in that four days. That's the highest one of the lot. So which reassignments are occurring most, ones that, which, that shouldn't occur, what teams are operating on issues for excessive times. So it's a whole different way of looking at a process from it by using a different activity. And it, this can also be used in the whole process optimization journey in, all right, let's really try to manage. We know that there's been too many reassignments. This will tell us why? What's going on? Um, then we've got this another. We've that's it. So we've looked at the incident process from the assignment group perspective, the status perspective. Sorry, here's um, some changes. So a different set of steps and activities associated with a different process. The same activity as in status, but different process, all right? Um, we can look at right here, they go planning, depending to resolve. Oh, that shouldn't really happen. They should be implemented, right? So pending the resolved is non-compliant in most instances. Variant two is better. Planning, pending, implementing, resolve, close. That's good. That's how things should happen. Three is just hopeless. Planning straight to close. Uh, this is real data. That's just lazy. So we would want to know, okay, what resources, what changes are these? Why? Let's create an initiative to improve it. All right. So that was just very briefly. Now, uh, anybody in, in finalising? Okay. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. You can visit metricas.com. Um, there's a ton of tutorials on the website about process, optimi process optimization, both from a generic perspective and from the applications perspective and from the business, business value. Um, at the marketplace, you can get access to um, online demo, if any of you have ideas or thoughts or feedback, happy to have a chat. But um, in summary, thank you for spending this time with me. I hope you've had a good day at um, JiraCon and I look forward to keeping in touch. Okay, thank you.